One of the biggest mistakes a software developer can make is actually neglecting software license. The consequences are really not good. You can easily get fired from the company that you're working at. You can easily lose the ownership of the product that you're working on. You can also get sued and owe money to third party. Well, we all have heard this kind of nightmare stories where an intern working at Microsoft used some kind of a little piece of code that had a proprietary license to it and then got sued by the company itself. Well, therefore, in this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about licenses and using them. And of course, how to automate all of that paperwork. Believe me, I have an extremely corporate software development job where all of these licensing topics are always discussed. That's why I'd like to share all of my knowledge with you. Well, let's first define what a software license is. I'm pretty sure you've already seen those license files in GitHub repository. And a license basically means you can use the code if you follow its terms. And it defines a set of responsibilities for those who use the code and those who produce the code. And actually, licenses are pretty much everywhere. If you install Electron to be able to build desktop applications based on JavaScript, automatically you're installing 87 JavaScript packages that have licenses, but that's not all. All of these 87 packages are also relying on at least 50 other JavaScript licenses. So you can see how the number of licenses is easily multiplied. And this means you have to comply with every single license that is attached to an NPM package that lives in your source code. Now, before we go into specific licenses and see which ones you can use easily and which ones you should stay away from, let's first discuss which type of licenses we have in general. The first one is called public domain, which kind of means that there is actually no license attached to this code. You would find this kind of pieces of code somewhere on the internet, somewhere on Stack Overflow or CodePen, but still watch out, not all of the examples are public domain. One thing about public domain though, this kind of code is not usually the best quality. So whenever you're copying somewhere from Stack Overflow, obviously make sure that it fits your needs and it's optimized. The next type is called permissive, and it's actually the most popular one. You've probably already heard about MIT and Apache licenses that are part of the permissive types of licenses. And one thing in common here is that you can freely use this software without even mentioning the author. And furthermore, you can modify this software without getting any extra permissions from the author or the owner. The next type of license is called copy left license. It's less permissive, compared to the actual permissive ones, but still not proprietary. What a copyleft license means is that you might use this software freely, but under specific circumstances, depending on the license itself. It can be many things. For example, notifying the author that they used their code, or not being able to modify the source code, or the fact that as soon as you use this kind of license from the third-party package in your application, your application has to automatically follow a copy left license as well. And last but not least, of course, proprietary. Now let's talk about the most popular software licenses that you're probably gonna come across 90% of the time. The first one is the MIT license that we already mentioned before. This license allows you to do anything with the code as long as you include the original copyright notice and a disclaimer. Okay, now in an easier language. The MIT license is like sharing your toy with your friend. You let them play with it as long as they say thank you and don't break it. The next one is Apache license 2.0. The Apache license is also quite permissive, although there is one difference compared to the MIT license. The main difference is that Apache requires users to include a copy of the license and a note of any changes made to the original software or the code. It's like sharing your toy with your friend, but you ask them to share their toys too and tell you if they change your toy. The next one is BSD or Berkeley Software Distribution. This one also falls into the category of permissive licenses. Although BSD licenses come in different versions and can have different requirements, such as requiring users to include a disclaimer and so on. BSD is like sharing your toy with your friend, but the rules really depend on specific types of this license. Some versions ask your friend to say thank you and not break your toy as in the ones before, while other versions ask them to be careful with your toy and not use your name for their own toys. 
Now, how about the most popular copyleft license? How about the GNU General Public License, aka GPL? As we already discussed about the nature of the copyleft licenses, the GPL license is like a game where everyone has to follow the same rules. If you change the rules, you have to share them with everyone else playing the game. And the last one, which is quite an interesting one in my opinion, is the Mozilla Public License. The Mozilla Public License is like sharing your toy with your friend, but you ask them to share their toys too and tell you if they change your toy. I hope this was all clear enough. If not, I'm gonna link an article in the video description for you to dig even deeper if you'd like to. Now, which license would you actually choose for your own projects? Now, if you're working on some kind of a side project that simply inspires you and where you have no monetary benefits and you wouldn't mind other people copying and modifying your code, then go for something permissive like MIT. If you're working on some kind of a small non-profit organization where you actually don't mind if the code gets distributed or not, but still want to keep some kind of a sense of ownership, then go for the permissive one, but Apache. Another case is when you're actually working in a commercial organization or any other organization that has proprietary software, but this software that you're working on can be open source to the public, you can use the Mozilla license to make sure that you have a bigger part of ownership in the code. Quick word about automating license checking. Usually in companies, you have one person who is responsible for checking licenses that development teams use. And you as a developer in the team can make this a good practice that every time your CD and CI pipeline runs, you have an automated license auditor built into your pipeline so that it can automatically detect non-permissive licenses and let you know that you need to get rid of the code. A bigger corporations might use third-party services like FOSS ID, for example. This was it, guys. I hope you liked the video as always, and please make sure that you're subscribed. And if you're still interested in similar topics about system design and architecture, make sure to check out my playlist.